Welcome back, everybody, and Merry Christmas. This is Steve KM9G, and I have a uh, very special Christmas video for you guys for today. I was asked by a local organization to help them with an FM radio station setup, and people often ask me, what can you do with a ham radio license? Well, this is one of the things that you can do with a ham radio license. And you don't actually need the license to do this, but all of the studying that you do in order to acquire the license is directly applicable to this. So what I want to do is take a few minutes here to show you uh, some of the things that I was able to accomplish because I have the skills of a ham radio operator. Okay, so what is the Miracle at Big Rock? The Miracle at Big Rock is a very large... Uh, I guess it used to be a farm way back when, and now it has kind of changed. It still is a little bit of a farm. It's kind of changed over to this venue where they can do all kinds of events. And as an example for this one here, they have Christmas lights, food trucks, Santa and s'mores, shopping, fireworks, free parking, and more. They, they tried to get that to rhyme. That's pretty cool. Uh, there are over 10 million lights here. They have helicopter rides overhead. Um, sleigh rides with you know horse-drawn carriages fireplaces they even have these little tents that you can do um, it's a pretty neat little engagement and what they asked me to do was build an antenna and this fm radio station for you so let me walk you through the process i took for building the antenna so the first thing you have to do is think about the application that you're going to have and their application was they wanted to be able to drive around this lake and listen to an FM radio station being broadcast into the car stereo of the driver of the car. Car stereos typically have a vertically polarized antenna, so I needed a vertically polarized antenna that would work with that. And immediately what popped into my head was a ground plane antenna or a quarter wave ground plane antenna. The next thing I needed to do was find an open frequency. There is a rule in the US that says that you can use an unused portion of the FM spectrum as long as you don't put out too much power and you accept interference and yada, yada, yada. If you wanna look at the, the rule for that, it is online at the FCC's website. So I got in my car and I tuned my FM stereo to find an unused frequency. And the one that I came up with was 89.5. This website here goes through um, all the different maths that you need in order to do it. This is m0ukd.com. And there's actually quite a lot of useful information out on m0ukd.com. And I took a generic velocity factor for my antenna wire as 0.95 and then put in my frequency of 89.5 and it tells me that the vertical element A should be 31.34 inches and the radials B and B, and I actually did four total radials, uh, should be 35.10 inches. And this gets you very close to where you need to be. And then we put some ham radio skills into the mix and start getting the antenna tuned in. All right, so I took a SO239 chassis connector and soldered the vertical wire into the chassis connector and then used some ring terminals to connect the ground radials to the four holes that allow you to screw the chassis connector into well, the chassis. And then I used my coax to connect to the FM transmitter. There'll be a link for the FM transmitter in the description down below. I got it off of Sweetwater um, and it works out pretty well. It's an American made transmitter out in the state of Utah. So you can see uh, the vertical element here and then you can see the four radials coming off the bottom here and you can see some collectible Legos and some fancy stuff in the background. Don't pay any attention to that. We're talking about antennas here today, folks. So this is the, um, the vertical and then we'll do a zoom in here real quick on how I have to fold it over in order to get it to um, the proper resonance and so this was the the length that I started out with from M0 UKD and I kind of just cut it roughly to length and then I started folding it over and there's a lot of reasons why when you cut it to length it won't be resonant until you trim it. Some of that has to do with the area that you're in, some of it has to do with the type of wire that it is, but what we know as hams is that you just start removing some of the wire until you get it down to where you want it to be. I've got it hanging from a metal hook into this old barn beam here and the I'm using what they call an S-beaner, which is made out of plastic to give myself a little bit of distance. It's coming off the tip of the antenna. There's not going to be a lot of interference um, or coupling going on there, but just didn't want to connect it directly to the metal because then the length of the antenna plus the length of the hook is going to be 
actually what's going on there. So when you fold it over, you just need to twist it around itself a little bit. This does add a little bit of capacitance to the end of the antenna, but not enough to harm what we're working on, what we're trying to achieve here. Let's see, next up, uh, we take the antenna and we start putting it into some uh, PVC so that it can be hung outside. This is a PVC end cap with a threaded adapter to a regular piece of PVC tubing. That way I can unscrew this later on and I can change the wire around when we get to the site and all kinds of other stuff. And so what I did was I put the, um, I drilled a hole in the center using a step drill, put the chassis connector down onto it, and then drilled out the four holes around the outside for the screw lugs to go in for my ground radials. And then this here is the finished product. I have about a three foot length of PVC pipe. I have a glued on cap with a screw eye in the top. My antenna probably ends about right here and then goes all the way down to the bottom to that chassis connector that I showed you. And I've got the ground radials just kind of hanging in free space off the outside. And this gives me the ability, like I said before, to make some modifications when we get it out into the field. And there is our SWR plot on the Nano VNA. You can see that at 89.520, we are at 1.18 to one. Uh, the antenna that came with this thing was set for 106 megahertz but was usable throughout the entire portion of the band. And so I knew that when I got it out and installed, it was going to change. I just wanted to get really close. So this, I was pretty happy with this result. And then this is what it looks like when we did our first install. Uh, this is an old barn. You can kind of get an idea of the elevation that we're working with here. I was up on top of one of those giant cherry pickers and this was the the spot that they gave me was hanging on the edge of the fan. You can see they've got a uh, Wi-Fi antenna over here on the other side, some other stuff going on. This did work out really well, but later on in the video, we'll show you that I did have to move it just to get some more height and some better coverage from the antenna. But this is where we started with. Let's take a look at the site and how we got everything all set up. All right, inside of the big barn, we made a little bit of a recording studio. I've got my laptop sitting here and I'm playing an FT8 off stream, so I have some audio going in. I have the audio out jack routed into the back of the FM transmitter. This is made by Rolls, a company based out of Utah. And then I have my big antenna plugged in over regular RG213 coax, and then I've got my ICOM 705 as a listening device using um, just a regular whip antenna. Receiving is not as difficult as transmitting is on a radio, and I just wanted to make sure that I could pick up the signals. And then we take it out in the car and we do a drive around. Every place that I stop and take a picture in the upcoming slides is going to be a spot where I'm either below grade or I'm behind a hill or I'm too far out of range or whatever the case may be. And we were able to clean up a lot of these spots by moving the antenna. So let's take a look at that. We're going to follow that up with uh, what it looks like at night and what it sounds like in the car and then some photos of where the uh, antenna transitioned off to.
Okay, so coming up, we're gonna play a couple of short clips of what it sounded like before we moved the antenna. It did get a lot better after we moved the antenna, but then you start getting into this diminishing returns where if I move it more, do I make it worse or do I make it better compared to the level of effort, compared to, compared to all kinds of other things. There's a couple of other extenuating circumstances or compromises that we had to go through, but take a listen as to what it sounds like as you're driving through in your car and you'll hear a little tiny bit of static. You can kind of see that that has something to do with all of the lights in the air. And then we're going to get to this part where we drive through this really cool light tunnel. And as you can imagine, being inside of this light tunnel, you're inside of what's pretty close to a Faraday cage. So we've got metal hoops covered in electrical lights on the far side of a hill where the antenna's on the other side of the hill. So we're, we're transmitting through dirt into a Faraday cage. And it still sounds pretty darn good for what it is. And this antenna transmitter, this antenna, this FM transmitter is only seven watts. So that should also help put it into perspective a little bit. We're almost a half a mile away, maybe a little bit more at this point. Take a listen. Get your ham radio license, they said. You'll see the heights, they said. Oh, there were some heights. Check this out. Yeah, that's me up there in that cherry picker. We moved the antenna from the third story fan shroud that it was on to the top of the silo. This is an additional story up in the air and it's farther towards farther towards, closer towards the lake. After we did this, the signal improved by another 20%, I would say. You're not gonna be 100% at seven watts on bands that you don't have full legal access to. Um, when you are a licensed ham radio operator, you can use up to 1500 watts on ham bands for non-commercial purposes. Uh, so having your license does allow you to talk around the world on a relatively inexpensive station. I hope you found this interesting and exciting. There is a video right over here that I think you will find interesting. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.